Welcome to Circuit Valley. I'm Gaurav, and this video is going to be about one more IKEA product. This time is going to be a motion sensor from IKEA, and you can see in the front this is very tiny little motion sensor. It's battery operated, and in the back you can see the product information. I believe it is pronounced. I believe it is pronounced Wellhorn or something like that. Actually, I don't know any Swedish at all, so I cannot tell you if this is the correct pronunciation or not. I call it Wellhorn. There are three buttons on the back, and this is the battery compartment, and these three buttons operates. This button is for pairing. This particular sensor can be paired with Zigbee devices. You can directly pair it to IKEA switches and IKEA bulbs, and uh, it can definitely be paired to IKEA hub. People can pair it with the home assistant hub as well, with a Zigbee device, because it only supports Zigbee, I believe, and there's no Bluetooth in there. And this button sets how long the light is going to be stay on, one minute or five minutes. This button tells you if light activates regardless of the availability of darkness or lack of light. And in this mode, it will only turn on the lights when it's night. And in this mode, it's, only, it's going to turn on the lights regardless of how much light is available in the ambient. Most likely, we'll see one passive infrared sensor because it's a passive infrared. And we will also most likely see an ambient light sensor. To be able to detect how much light is available, you need some kind of light sensor. This is a, just a teared out video, it's not a product review. I'm not going to show you how does it operate. So let's take open the battery compartment. It has somewhat of a protection against the water ingress or a debris going in. You can see it says here IP44. I do not think IKEA is recommended to be operated in outdoor environment, primarily meant for indoor. I have many of these sensors, they work really well. Let's see how we can take it apart. You can see I have IKEA LADA batteries in there. AAA and we already have one we already have one clue there most likely this header or this exposed pad you see these are places for programming adapter and stuff like that and uh, let's see how we can take it apart I am more than happy to destructively tear down as you may be able to guess I see a very little fine crease there appropriate place for us to try to gain access there I will try my Victorinox there and try to clear it apart. Okay, it's not coming out as easily. Maybe it has lock on certain sides. Yeah. So this is how it looks inside, and this is the lens. We're supposed to focus, and you can see. I don't know if you can guess it, but there's a lens pattern on it. You do not see this lens pattern from the front, but there's definitely a lens pattern on it. Destructive tear down was not that necessary. It can be, I think we can still put it back, or maybe there is a, I do not see any locks. Yeah, it was a destructive tear down, you can see on the edges. It is sealed completely through, and I think it uh, is ultrasonically welded onto the edges. You can see a tiny bit of plastic remain from the welding. Exactly in that crease, so it is not locked, it's just welded. I will check, maybe I'll check later on off screen if this is waterproof. This crease is waterproof, but we are not interested in that right now. So, this is our PCB power comes in on these two terminal, and there is for some reason there's a fuse. I believe to protect battery against short circuit here and uh, this I believe it's going to be light sensor this is the LED for indication of the low battery this uh, little globe will shine red once if you have a low battery or some other situation there may be other faults I do not know which other faults get indicated and this is the SOC most likely is going to support Zigbee or maybe it support Bluetooth as well we will focus and we will try to find out which part they are Let's zoom in a bit. 
now maybe you can see a bit better I still do not have good picture because I'm looking through the lens but I believe this chip is going to be the same chip as we, we saw in the last year down of IKEA smart socket and I do not know what this U2 is most likely it's going to be a regulator as I said this is one LED this is one LED and that's one light sensor we will take it further apart we want to see what kind of switches they are using or what is in the back and there's a switch behind it so we will take it further apart and let's do it now I'll try to maybe push in these uh, PCB pads I'll not use my screwdriver because that's pretty nice screwdriver I'm not meant to be physically okay so that was easy let's zoom in this is how it looks on the back side this is the pairing button switch and this is a uh, is going to be this which much was in the middle this is the time switch and this is the switch for day and night detection for the light machine light detection yeah they feel exactly the same nothing special about them there are two LEDs to indicate one minute five minutes daytime and nighttime detection this is normal battery terminal let's turn around and this is how it looks so I have verified this uh, MG1 this MG21 marked part this is a silicon labs part and it's a multi protocol SOC it can do definitely to Zigbee because it's doing it it can also do Bluetooth this is the same part which is used in IKEA smart socket and the exact part number is EFR32 MG21 and let's look at the other part we'll try to find out what that is the small part is marked 8601 I don't know if you can read the markings because at least I cannot read on the screen it was very, because it's very small so just to confirm one more time this is marked MG21 A010 J1 and it is EFR32 MG21 series 2 multi protocol wireless SOC from Silicon Labs and this small part if you can read it then it's uh, 8601 the precision CMOS single supply rail to rail op amp and the pin number 4 of it is supposed to be ground if you want maybe we can measure against the negative voltage or negative terminal and we'll see if it is really shorted to ground for the sake of verification So fourth number pin is should be negative supply. Most likely it is op amp because although I don't see any analog devices marking on it. Is there any ground at all? So eight number pin is ground. Fourth number is definitely not ground. Pin number one is also ground. I am not that sure actually but I believe it's op amp because you will need some kind of signal conditioning with this guy to be able to convert this uh, hand level by the SOC or uh, it can also handle direct analog voltages but I don't know maybe it needs then more lot more CPU power and this is definitely a night sensor or maybe this analog part is maybe this op amp is related to only to this light sensor it may looks it has only two terminals so most likely not a digital light sensor and on the back there is nothing as I have shown before so that's it for this video in future maybe I'll tear down more IKEA products you can visit my website www.circuitvalley.com